All right, we've talked about rational numbers, so let's go ahead and talk about irrational numbers. Uh, we know that a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction of integers. So an irrational number would be just a, a number that cannot be written in that way. So we have numbers that can't be written as fractions. Um, some of the common ones are square roots, like square root of 2. And we also have numbers that uh, may be fractions, for instance, pi over 3, but it's not a fraction of integers because pi is not an integer. All right, so um, in this video, we will focus on irrational numbers, which are square roots, although you can see that there are other types of irrational numbers. All right, um, here are two examples of square roots which are not irrational, and the reason is that uh, the numbers inside, the 4 and the 16, are called perfect squares. All right. And we know that these are perfect squares because um, we can write them as the squares of some other number. Right? So 2 squared is 4. We could also think of this as negative 2 times negative 2. Right? And we know that 4 squared equals 16. All right, so these are these are not um, irrational numbers, and what this means is that we can actually um, find the square roots of these. All right, and just a, a quick refresher of how to do that: um, the square root of four. We're asking what number squared or times itself equals four. All right, so because I can rewrite this, the uh, the four as two squared. Right, then I know that the square root of 4 is equal to 2. So it's just whatever number is being squared to get the number inside of the square root sign. Uh, the square root of 16, I know that this one is 4 because 4 is the number that's squared or times itself. That gives me 16. All right, um, the square root of 25, that's another one. I know that 5 squared is 25, so the square root of 25 is 5. All right, um, you will be asked to simplify square roots, some of these radical symbols, that's another way of saying it, a, a square root or a radical. Right? And um, a square root is not simplified if any of these three conditions are true. Um, if there is a perfect square in the square root, right, it's not simplified. Right, so we saw a couple examples, uh, the square root of uh, 4, the square root of 16. But we can also have a perfect square that's hiding. So for example, the square root of uh, 12 is not simplified because I've actually got a perfect square in there. 12 is 4 times 3, and 4 is a perfect square. All right, and we'll talk about how to simplify and make sure that there are no perfect squares inside the square root. Um, other things that we want to avoid, a fraction in a square root, that's not simplified. So if you see the square root of one-third, that's not simplified. Right? And then anytime we have a square root in a fraction, right, and specifically in the denominator of a fraction, let's add that in, uh, in fractions, denominators. All right, so... The square, or let's do uh, 3 over square root 5. That's not simplified. All right. But square root of 5 over 3, that is simplified. All right. So to simplify a square root, um, this one we can see right away. There are no fractions involved. So the only thing that I need to do is to check and see if there is a perfect square inside of my square root. And I do this by factoring. So a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, first of all, if you can see right away that 50 is 25 times 2, and if you happen to know that 25 is a perfect square, we can rewrite this as 25 times 2. All right. And then we have a rule that tells us that the square root of a product is the same thing as the product of two square roots. So basically, I can split this up and say that that's the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. 
right? And then I can do the part that's a perfect square. The square root of 25 is 5. And then the square root of 2, that's fully simplified. All right, so you can see why we're looking for perfect squares. It's because those are the numbers that we can take the square roots of. All right, um, let's say that you didn't know that. So let's, let's try this on 8, the square root of 8. Uh, let's say that you didn't know uh, if there was a perfect square in there. So one thing that you can do is to just start factoring this number. We'll make a factor tree and look for anything at all that 8 can be divided by. So I might say, all right, well, I know 8 is 2 times 4, and I know 4 is 2 times 2, and I would stop as soon as I get down to all of the prime numbers. All right? Now notice, um, I had 2 times 2, and that was a perfect square. All right? So if I do the square root of that, um, the square root of the 4, or the 2 times 2, that just gives me a 2. All right? So what I'm doing here is I'm looking for pairs of numbers, because every time you have a pair of two factors, that indicates that you had a perfect square one step up in your factor tree. All right? And then I have one remaining 2, which is not a pair. All right, I can't trace that back to a perfect square. So that part stays in the square root. Uh, let's put that in orange. That part stays in the square root, and that's the square root of 2. All right. So back on um, this first problem, all right, if I didn't know that 25 was a perfect square, I could have also factored 50. Maybe I know that that's 2 times 25. 25 is 5 times 5. And then every time I have a pair of prime numbers, 5 times 5, that indicates that I had a perfect square that I can square root. And so I know the square root of 25 is just going to be one of those 5s. And then I have one remaining 2 that's a prime at the bottom of the factor tree but that can't be square rooted. Okay, so 5 square root of 2. The square root of 54. Right, so let's start factoring this one. Um, I do know the 54, right, and that's 27. I know that 3 goes into 27, and that gives me 9. And if you can see right there that 9 can be square rooted, go ahead and do that. But if you can't, then keep going. 9 is 3 times 3. Alright. And now I'm down to prime numbers. I have a 2, a 3, a 3, and a 3, and I can't factor any more. So I would look for pairs of two numbers to indicate that I had a perfect square. Right, so here are my 3's. I can square root 9, and that gives me 3. And then I still have a square root of the numbers that are left that were not part of perfect squares. Right, so I had a 2, and I had a 3. Okay. And these um, get multiplied together because these were all factors that multiplied to equal 54. Right? And then my final answer, anything that's inside the square root that I can't take the square root of, I would recombine and remultiply it. So this would be 3 times the square root of 6. All right, 108. I know that this is 2 times 54. And I can just use my work from the previous problem. And I already know um, how 54 is going to factor. 2 times 27, 3 times 9. All right, And if you can see that 9 is a perfect square, that's great. All right. Um, also notice, we have two twos here. All right. So that indicates that I could follow those twos back and multiply them, and I would get 4, which is a perfect square. All right. So notice I could, re I could have written this as the square root of 4 times 3, here's my 3, times 9. All right. And if you want to convince yourself of that, um, just multiply those together and you should get 108. Right? So that's the square root of 4 
times the square root of 3 times the square root of 9. That's 2. The square root of 3 I can't do, and the square root of 9 is 3. Alright, and then the same rule applies. If I have two numbers that are outside of the square root, at the very end I just recombine everything together, and I will write my number up top here. Alright, so 2 times 3, I would remultiply those together to get 6, and then I have the square root of 3 that I can't do anything with. And that is fully simplified. There are no perfect squares inside the square root. All right, what do we do if we have a square root in the denominator of a fraction? All right, um, the steps that we're going to take, this is called rationalizing. So what we're trying to do is to make the denominator a rational number. We don't want it to be a square root anymore. And if I multiply this by um, square root of 5 over square root of 5, that equals 1, right? so I know by the identity property of multiplication that I'm not changing the value of, uh, of my original fraction. Right? But now notice what happens. In the numerator, I have 4 times the square root of 5. Right? And to multiply with radicals or square roots, um, you would just multiply any numbers that are outside. So there's a 4, nothing outside to multiply it with. Then you would leave a square root, and any numbers that are inside square roots get multiplied together. So this is just a 5. Right? So, so we would just have 4 times the square root of 5. In the denominator, we have two numbers inside a square root, and those can be multiplied together. 5 times 5 is 25. Alright, so my numerator, that is fully simplified. And in the denominator, the square root of 25 equals 5. Alright, as a shortcut, um, you might be able to see that square root of 5 times square root of 5 is just going to equal whatever the number was inside of that square root. Um, another example of this, uh, square root of 3 times square root of 3. I know right away that that's going to be a 3, but if you weren't sure, you can multiply those together, get the square root of 9, and then the square root of 9 equals 3. Alright, how about 7 divided by the square root of 3? Alright, so I'll multiply this. Alright, I can multiply it by 1, that's the only thing I can do without changing the value of the fraction. And I'll choose to do square root of 3 over square root of 3. So you're just choosing whatever the denominator is uh, originally so that this will become a perfect square. Right? In the numerator I get 7 square root of 3 and in the denominator I already know this is going to be a 3. Right? Um, let's see. Let's do one more example of that. 6 divided by the square root of 2. Right, so I'll multiply by square root of 2 divided by square root of 2. In the numerator, I get 6 square root of 2. In the denominator, I have square root of 4, which equals 2. Okay, so square root of 4 is 2. Now this one's slightly different. Notice that my numbers outside of the square root can be reduced, 6 divided by 2. So if there is any reducing that we can do with the fractions, go ahead and do that. And that would just give me a 3, and then I would still have that multiplied by square root of 2. Um, if you had something like square root of 14 divided by square root of 7, same thing, you're allowed to reduce numbers inside of square roots. Okay, so I can divide those both by 7, and I'll get square root of 2 over square root of 1, and can't do anything with the square root of 2, but the square root of 1 is just 1. Alright, so my final answer would be square root of 2. Alright, what about fractions inside of square roots? Alright, so we have a rule for dividing with radicals, and it tells us that we can um, split this up and say that the 
square root of a fraction is the same thing as the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. Okay, um, so I'll leave the numerator alone for just a minute. But the denominator, square root of 16, I know what to do with that. The square root of 16 is 4. All right, so if I'm checking to see if this is simplified, um, I fix the fact that there was a fraction in a square root. Um, I can see that there are no square roots in the denominator of this fraction. But now I also need to check and make sure that there are no perfect squares inside of my square root. Alright, so to check this, I notice 125 is 5 times 25. So I actually do have a perfect square, and I can take the square root of the 25 part of this. All right, so this is square root of 25 times square root of 5 over 4. And the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 5 can't be, uh, can't be done, can't be simplified, all over 4. And that's my final answer. Okay? So there are no square roots in my, in my fraction, um, there are no fractions in my square roots, no perfect squares inside the square root, and then finally the 5 fourths is in lowest terms. Alright, here's another example. The square root of 11 thirteenths. We have a rule, our rule tells us this is the same as the square root of 11 divided by the square root of 13. All right. Um, I can't take the square root of 11. I can't take the square root of 13. All right. But I do know how to um, rationalize the denominator. All right. So anytime you have a square root in the denominator, we can multiply by that same square root, and that way we get a perfect square. Okay. We do the same thing in the numerator because we want this fraction to equal. One. We don't want to multiply by anything other than 1 because that would change the value of our fraction. And when we are trying to simplify, we're not changing the, the original problem. We're just expressing it in a simpler way. Okay, so I'll multiply. I'll have the square root of 11 times the square root of 13. And then in the denominator, I have the square root of 169, which I should know is going to be 13. Okay, numerator, I have the square root of 11 times 13. And in the denominator, the square root of 169 is 13. Alright, one final step. I need to multiply 11 times 13 inside of my square root. And that gives me uh, 143. And I know that 143 um, has no perfect squares in it because I've already seen the factored form right here, 11 times 13. Those are both prime numbers. They can't be um, factored anymore. And there are no pairs of numbers which would indicate a perfect square. Okay. Okay, so that is my final answer.